The island of Sodor is the home of the Northwestern Railway. With engines of all shapes and sizes. Working hard to deliver goods and passengers to their destinations. There are branch lines that run along the coast of the island. Serving the docks, the fishing villages and the seaside towns. There are branch lines that run to the farms, quarries, and ancient castles of the island's heartland. And there is the main line, which runs all the way from Natford on the west coast of the island. To Vickers Town in the east. The line continues over the Vickers Town Bridge where it connects to the mainland beyond. Mavis's Impatient Driver Across the island of Sodor, there are many signals, and with them comes patience. Most engines and their crews are quite patient, knowing it's not safe to run without them. And I say, most, because poor Mavis once had a driver who didn't grasp this well at all. It happened when she was first allowed to take trains from the quarry to the big station for Toby after her runaway. One morning, the quarry manager came to see Mavis at her sheds. I've just received a telephone call from the sheds. Toby's got boiler egg, took on some bad water the other day, so he can't take the first stone turn of the day to the harbour at the big station. You must take it, Mavis, and on your return journey, you'll have to bring the workmen up here. Yes, sir, replied Mavis, and she rolled away. At last, my proper first journey to be on the top station. Only this time not as a runaway. As Mavis rolled along the countryside, she hummed a little tune. When she arrived at the big station, she was surprised at the busy state of engines coming and going. Oh my! I forgot what this yard was like! After she delivered the trucks, Mavis made her way back to the big station to take the workmen to the quarry. She looked around at the station. There were lots of engines waiting their own departures. Then she looked towards the signal gantry. Mavis started off quite suddenly. The sudden movement took her aback. And when she neared the points, Watch out! cried Henry. That was my signal, Mavis! S sorry! Luckily, Mavis was fitted with the train protection and warning system just after her runaway incident, so she'd been able to stop just in time. Do we go back? We can't. We need permission from the signalman first, replied the guard. Then she spoke to her driver. What on earth, driver? she scolded. She had always been angered at her driver's impatience after previous incidents he had caused at the quarry.
We were taken forever, Mavis. Oh, for goodness sake. We've got a train of workmen on board. Do you not realise that you might have hurt them? Mavis's old driver was not a patient man. He hated waiting and wanted to get things done so he could get home quickly at the end of the day. The guard received approval from the signalman and Mavis and her train rolled back towards the station. She arrived at the quarry late. The quarry manager was there waiting and he didn't look too happy. After you shut those coaches into the sidings, I want a word with you, driver. So that's what they did. The fat controller has suggested that I have an inspector to come and train you, driver, about the signal gantry at the big station. So I arrange for one to meet you at Lower Tidmouth tomorrow. You'll head there first thing in the morning. But, but what about the truck, sir? Percy will come up here to take them tomorrow. After all, it is now legal for engines like him to travel up here even without cow catchers. Now go shut these trucks, please. Yes, sir, replied Mavis and her driver in unison. Well, if only we had a second engine to help us up there. I don't see why I have to be taught about signals. I know plenty about them. Today was just a bad day, that's all said her driver. Mavis just ignored him and carried on with her work. Early the next morning, Mavis pulled into the yards at Lower Tidmouth. The inspector was there waiting. I still don't see why I need to be trained. Because you almost caused a serious accident yesterday, and delayed us with our work at the quarry too, replied Mavis crossly. As soon as the inspector climbed aboard, they set off again. At the big station, it was busy again, and Mavis waited as usual for her signal. They waited and waited. This made the driver more and more annoyed. Just be patient, said the inspector. I have waited long enough. Now come on, Mavis. Time is of the essence. And he pulled the throttle. Mavis started to move. Not again, she cried. Stop, stop, shouted the inspector. The driver didn't know that the points were set against her. Mavis felt her wheels diverting off the tracks and onto solid ground. Luckily, Mavis wasn't going too fast, and not much damage had been done. The crash was reported, and emergency services soon arrived to check on the inspector and the driver, as did the fat controller. The whole thing shocked them, but they weren't injured. The inspector and the fat controller then turned towards the driver, who looked at them meekly. You're too impatient, remarked the inspector disdainfully. A trip that I don't need on my railway. With Mavis blocking this path of the line, some my engines can't get in or out of the station, remarked the fat controller. The quarry manager soon arrived on board Percy, and he too was not happy. Clearly, you're unwilling to learn about signals, so consider yourself terminated. Mavis set to work once more the next day, having been deemed to fit to operate. The fat controller had provided the quarry manager a new driver for her. This new driver didn't get everything right at first, but Mavis noticed that he was much more patient and open to learning than her old driver. And as time went on, he did just that. Mavis's new driver has learned a great deal since he took the job, and she's most fond of him but she sometimes thinks about her previous driver and wonders what became of him since his dismissal. Wherever he is now though, we all know that his termination was for the best, for the sake of patience of signals on the line.